So Gurudev moved to uh, uh, Brajendra uh, Nandan's house. Is that his name? Brajendra Nanda. Is that Chandramukhi's name? Yeah, Brajendra Nanda and Ma Malika. Mm. Ma Malika? Yeah. Was it yeah. Matila? I forget her name. The wife. She's, they're all nice devotees. And he has five acres. He had this like nice, he had a, he had a gazebo kind of um, structure there. Yeah. Have you been there? Yes, you know? I've been there, yeah. All right, yeah. Well, that was great. And the shed was um, converted their shed into a Hari Kata shed. And um, uh, Braj Balaba, that's his name, it was Braj Balaba, he was clearing his land, he was telling me. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few days before the festival, he had, he had a streamer, you know, one of these, one of these things, and he, uh, one of these death adders was, um, came out of the bush. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he thought, what shall I do? Because there's a couple of hundred people, so he, he strimmed this, this snake oh. and killed it, you know. And then when Gurudev came, mm -hmm. like a couple of weeks later, he was walking from his gazebo to the Hari Kata venue, mm -hmm. which is just a couple of hundred yards. But he stopped right there and he said, do you kill any animals? Do you kill any, anything here? And he said, oh yeah, I killed a snake. Mm -hmm. He said, do not kill even a snake. But somehow Gurudev had sensed that right there something had happened, you know? So, but yeah, you know. And uh, yeah, so he, but the point was is that on that first tour, he stayed for two weeks in one place and just built this Hari Kata, which the pinnacle of devotion, this book, was based on that first, that tour, especially that, that leg of the Australian tour. And uh, Gurudev said, I, I'm, I'm giving this Hari Kata for maybe one or two people who were qualified in the audience. You know, Shamarani was there and um, uh, Vrindavan Velasini was there, you know, senior, you know, some of the senior Prabhupada stuff, I think but, but Budarapu was there. Lectures. I remember transcribing the tapes, you know. Mm -hmm. And even in Malaysia, we would, I remember um, Gurudev came out of his room, I didn't see him, we didn't really see him, we were working on transcribing these uh, cassettes of Gurudev's classes, and then Gurudev actually stood right, his feet were right there, and right, he basically made a point to put his feet right where I was. But I was so engrossed in what I'm doing, I thought it was Madam March. So I just, just, I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm just too busy. I'm not going to look, you know. And it was Gurudev just standing right there, you know, his pair of toes, you know, like right there. And you know, he just came out to see what was going on in the afternoon. And um, yeah, so so many. In those days, Gurudev would give out, you know, like he would give out the prasadam. And that stopped later on, but he would give out cookies at the end, and everyone was like. Just like the, the Qatar, everyone was just swimming in the Qatar and it was just incredible. And then Gurudev would give out prasadam. Oh, this was the, the last time I saw Srila Gurudev. It was in Ojai, 2010, in uh, Krishna, ba Krishna Bhamani and Brijesh Prabhu's house. Gurudev was kind of, it, it was more of a isolated place. Devotees weren't supposed to go there for darshan. It was just for Gurudev to rest before he was going to Italy. And I happened to be there. I got some fortune to, to be there, and it was Father's Day. So, so Gurudev, uh, Radhika and I decided to make garlands for Gurudev and wish him a happy Father's Day. <laughs> so we made garlands, we did Guru Puja. And just before that, Radhika said, you know, Gurudev told me to memorize this verse, and I'm going to recite it to him today to make him happy. Maybe you should recite a verse too. Let's, you should learn a verse. So, you know, I was persuaded into learning a verse. Now, in retrospect, I should have recited a verse I already knew. But I just decided to learn a new verse the same day. Yeah. And I, we came to Gride, Radhika recited her verse, and then it was my turn. And I looked at him, he was sitting on the couch in the living room. And then I just went blank, completely. I just, no words came in my mouth. And it was an awkward silence for 15 seconds. I was just staring. I didn't know what to say. I didn't remember anything. So then Gurudev looked at me and he started laughing and he started stomping his feet, stomping his feet. And he said, you dance? You dance? I said, yeah, yes, Gurudev. He says, oh, this is your verse. So, so sweetly and I, he's so kind because dance has always been something in my whole life I've always been attracted to and he just offered that to Krishna in that way like offering it saying I'm taking this and you make this your your sadhan practice your verse then you can actually realize these verses because through dance there's so much um, 
expression of these leelas and, and siddhanta, but if you really practice, you can understand through this practice of dance. So that was so sweet and encouraging. Gurudev utilizing all of our talents, offering them like flowers to, to Radha and Krishna. So it was very, very sweet. It was, I only went to America once for Gurudev in 1998 when this, um, the next instruction of this book, what, what's it called? The be, um, essence, of essence of all advice. Yeah. This year, this, these lectures yeah. he gave, and we was in San Francisco and also in Houston, I think. And I always remember what one class at the end. I think this was before Gude was just about to leave, and it was in San Francisco, and. Gude was speaking and then he, he had um, devotees, I'm not too sure it was Kishore Mohan and, or it might have been somebody else, but this, this, he got devotees to sing this Aus Australian tune, no the tune, yeah. but how he did it was he got devotees to sing it and then after a couple of Mohan mantras then he would tell him to stop and then Gude would almost give a commentary on like, oh this is how the gopis would he, he, and he would speak, he would say, you know, he would um, give some little commentary and then he'd say continue and then they would sing another couple of Maha Mantras and then he would stop again and then give more, it was just like a, because this was the, like a farewell class but it was just so much kind of nectar, I never saw that since then and even after where he would he would do it like this where devotees were in a really pathetic way because Gurude was leaving so as they were singing some mood was there anyway because Gurude was leaving but then Gurude would kind of how to say bring in this very high mood this mood of gopi separation within you mix it with the devotees separation because Gurude was about to leave and he would stop you know and then and then he would say okay continue and then stop. So they wrote for about four to five months tiny little sections every day with it's so sweet, it's worth you can get this. But I, I always remember this also, I think wow, this is there's certain times when you have a powerful dose you could say where it just it really goes in and this was one of those times, you know, so Shila Gurudeva no fisicamente foi in 2007. Uh, meu namorado, que eu tomo meu esposo, me emprestou um CD de Gurudeva, no qual eu comecei a ouvir, nunca mais parei. Uh, é, ele me mostrou a foto de Gurudeva e o que mais me marcou foi o olhar e os olhos azuis de Gurudeva. Eu lembro quando meu esposo tomou iniciação é, em 2007 também, é, através da cerimônia era feita por Chupad Vano Maharaj. E todos os devotos que tomaram iniciação entraram numa sala para ouvir Shila Gurudeva falando o mantra, né? E eu fui proibida de entrar porque eu não tinha iniciação. Mesmo assim, eu colei meu ouvido na porta e eu vi Gurudeva falando pela primeira vez. E foi muito forte. E naquele momento eu não tive dúvidas que tipo ele seria meu Gurudeva mesmo. A primeira vez que eu vi Gurudeva fisicamente foi no aeroporto em Guarulhos, em 2010, no Via Sapuja. É, todos os devotos estavam em êxtase cantando, foi algo muito assim diferente que eu nunca tinha visto, foi muito forte. E quando eu vi Gurudeva, é, eu não tive reação, eu não consegui cantar, não consegui bater palma, só fiquei olhando paralisada e parece que aquele segundo parou, eu só senti o meu coração, tum, tum, parecia que ia sair pela boca. Foi a primeira vez que eu vi Gurudeva e consegui tocar nos seus pés de lótus. É, quando eu fui tomar Diksha, eu tive medo, não sabia se eu estava, se era a hora ou não, mas algo me disse que eu devia tomar porque era agora ou nunca. Também a iniciação de Gurudeva, Diksha. 2010 e nesse mesmo festival na hora que Gurudeva estava se despedindo de todos os devotos é, eu fiquei que nem uma louca correndo atrás do carro dele sem ter força <risos> corri muito assim porque eu sabia que era a última vez que eu ia ver Gurudeva e, e ele me viu e ele fez assim com a mãozinha <risos> e foi muito forte para mim e foi a última vez que eu vi Gurudeva. 
Um outro fato que aconteceu no Via Sapuja foi no dia do Diksha. É... Os devotos estavam muito em êxtase, assim, e na hora que eu fui entregar meu prato para Guru Deva, um devoto me empurrou e eu não consegui entregar meu prato para Guru Deva. E eu queria chorar, fiquei desesperada. Aí o Sudarananda me colocou na frente de Guru Deva novamente e Guru Deva deu as bênçãos dele. E eu não sei, por impulso, eu peguei nas mãos de Guru Deva. E na hora eu pensei, Madhava Maharaj vai me xingar, né? Mas ele não me xingou, ele olhou e deu risada.